we discussed in this video about <clears throat> the closure properties of the recognizable languages. So closure properties of REC. And there is really just one main result with um, um, several different points that I want to prove. Really what this lemma says is if you have two languages, um, both recognizable, um, meaning recognizable by um, finite automata, whether non-deterministic or deterministic, then you also have the um, following languages uh, recognizable. Um, you have the union, that's also a recognizable language, and uh, you also have the intersection, So the uh, complement of both um, and you also have the concatenation of these languages and also the iteration of these languages. They are also recognizable. So that's the main result I want to prove. And, um, I'm going to prove it in a constructive way, uh, meaning that uh, given such languages, one way or another, you will have a way to uh, really prove the, um, uh, you, you will have the ability of building an automaton recognizing uh, all of these languages. So here is the proof. Um, and uh, here is the uh, place where it comes in very handy uh, that we have proved in the previous lectures that non-deterministic automata and deterministic automata are equivalent. So uh, it means that I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to be able to switch from one type of automata to the other type without worrying um, about their computation power. And also I want to comment that really this result is a uh, good tool to build recognizable languages. You will have a few basic languages that maybe you uh, prove directly to be recognizable and then Using these closure properties, you will be able to prove um, quite many other examples uh, to be recognizable as well. So, <clears throat> if I prove, um, so to, to start the proof, I'm, I'm going to say, uh, well, since uh, L is a recognizable language, this means really that the uh, L corresponds to uh, the language of some uh, uh, deterministic finite automaton A which could be, for example, consisting of, um, um, uh, you know, states uh, Q and the input alphabet sigma, and uh, maybe you have this transition function delta, and um, some uh, initial state Q0 and some final states. And also L prime was uh, recognizable. So this is also um, recognized by some uh, deterministic automaton, let's um, say A prime, consisting of states Q prime. Now, because I do operations on these languages, they uh, have to be over the same input alphabet. Uh, otherwise, uh, their union uh, doesn't make uh, much sense. So they are on the, over the, the same input alphabet. Some other transition function, obviously some other initial state and um, some other final states. And here is an important note. Um, I, I can assume uh, without loss of generality um, that really these are different states q and q prime are different states uh, so their intersection is empty and if it happens so that they were not uh, you know uh, they were not distinct from each other um, just uh, just rename uh, the states in Q prime, and then you are, you are going to have this condition trivially satisfied. So this is not a big deal, but I'm going to need this condition to be true in uh, my constructions. And so here is how the construction is going to go. Um, again, um, L is the language of uh, A, with A being um, Q, sigma, um, delta, Q0 and F, <clears throat> and uh, L prime is the language of this automaton A prime with um, A prime 
being uh, q prime sigma delta prime q zero prime and f prime so if we focus now on the first point and that was that the uh, union um, is uh, going to be a recognizable language and to prove this i'm just going to uh, build an, an automaton um, uh, and uh, the automaton i'm building I'm going to just, uh, you know, call it A uh, with symbol union here in the, in the index. And uh, this uh, uh, automaton is going to have um, uh, one new initial state, uh, P0. And this P0 is going to have two epsilon transitions. So uh, this is going to be a non-deterministic automaton. And one epsilon transition is going to be to this state, Q0. And the other epsilon transition is going to be to Q prime zero. And then in here, I'm going to have all the transitions of automaton A. So here is the automaton A with uh, all the transitions specified by uh, uh, function uh, transition function delta. And here I'm going to have all the transitions of the automaton A prime um, specified by the transition function um, uh, delta prime. And uh, so what, what this means is that um, I'm going to have um, this automaton to be really uh, specified like this. Um, formally, um, it's going to have as uh, states, um, all the states of the first automaton all the states of the second automaton, and also is going to have this um, new state. Um, so this is uh, one more state uh, that we didn't have before. So that's going to be the set of states of this automaton, and uh, obviously the same in input alphabet as the other ones. And I'm going to have uh, this transition relation that I specified here. Um, then the initial state is going to be this P0 in here. And for final state, I'm going to choose whichever final state, so all the final states of the first automaton and all the final states of the second automaton. And so when we think about the um, computations going in this automaton, you've got to realize that you're going to start the computations in P0, and then the very first move you do um, will be an excellent transition, which essentially is going to choose between the first automaton or the second automaton. And once you made your choice, then the computation goes as it went in this automaton, or if you made this choice, the computation is going to go um, according to this automaton. And it's going to read letter by letter from the input until uh, eventually, at the end of the input, it's going to reach a state. Um, and that state is going to be uh, final or not, uh, according to this automaton, but um, because of the way we have defined the final states, if it was finally in the automaton A prime, it would be finally in the big automaton. So in other words, what I'm saying is, this automaton <clears throat> is going to accept any word that's accepted um, in this automaton, and any word that's accepted in, in this automaton. So um, with this simple argument, uh, we can see that the language of this automaton is exactly the language of A. All the words accepted by A are also accepted by this one. And um, the language accepted by A prime. So that's exactly L union L prime, which is what we wanted. So indeed, <coughs> the union is a recognizable language. For a complement, um, so if I take the uh, complement, I, I need to prove that this one is a uh, uh, rec uh, recognizable language. Um, this is a very easy construction. I'm going to just build this automaton, which is essentially is going to go exactly like A, with just one exception. I'm going to use the same states, and obviously the same input alphabet, and even the same transi transition function, and even the same initial state, but here I'm going to use as a set of final states exactly Q minus F. So in other words, this automaton is going to accept whenever this automaton was rejecting and is going to reject whenever this one is going to accept. So it's really easy to see that the language of this automaton um, 
is exactly sigma star minus uh, the language of A, which is really the complement of language L. <clears throat> Now to see um, about the intersection, to see that this is indeed a recognizable language, you could also just, um, you know, um, simplify your life and, and make the following argument. Well, it's got to be recognizable just based on these two points we have proved before, because really by applying the, um, the Morgan rules, this is the same as having the complement of L and L prime union, and applying complement at the end. And, and all of these things, the complement and the union, and, and again applying the complement, all of these things we have we have shown that um, you know preserve the uh, recognizable character of these languages. So you could do this. Um, <clears throat> but as a matter of fact, I think that it's really uh, educational to think about um, a uh, direct construction. And um, the direct construction uh, goes something like this. Um, I'm, uh, um, so what, what I would like to, to do here is really this kind of, um, um, how should I say, a uh, sort of a Cartesian product of the two automata. So this is automaton A and, and this is the automaton A prime. And this one starts uh, computations in Q0, and this one starts in um, uh, Q prime zero. And somehow I would like to suggest that we do a Cartesian product, <clears throat> meaning that we are going to uh, start our computation in this initial state, which is the Cartesian product of Q0 and, and Q prime zero. And um, if this one was going to this state, whatever it, uh, it was in here, and this one was going into this state, then the new automaton is going to go into the pair of these two states. So with this simple trick of um, uh, thinking about the Cartesian product, what we do essentially is we run in parallel two simultaneous computations on the input word, one on automaton A and the other one on automaton A prime. and. Um, we are going to accept if uh, both of these computations end up in some states um, uh, that uh, this one belongs to F and, and this one belongs to uh, F prime. So only then we will accept, um, uh, uh, you know, the, the input word. So <clears throat> I think this requires a little bit more uh, explanations and uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to give it. So what I do is <clears throat> for this, Automaton for this uh, for this point, uh, I'm, I'm building this automaton A intersection, and this one is going to have a, as the set of states uh, exactly what I said. It's Q times Q prime, so the Cartesian product of Q and Q prime, and uh, the input alphabet obviously sigma. And uh, I'm going to uh, build um, a uh, new transition function. Let's say maybe I, I say a delta intersect. And um, <clears throat> as the initial state uh, for this, this automaton is going to be the pair of Q0 and Q0 prime. So uh, as I said, we start in the initial states of the two automata. And uh, as the final states, I'm going to take F times F prime. So I, I really have to end um, in a pair of states, one final um, in the first automaton and the other one final in the second automaton. So the only thing that requires explanations uh, is this, uh, how do you define this uh, delta uh, intersect? And really delta intersect of um, applied to a state, so a state uh, maybe something like P and P prime uh, with letter A is <coughs> going to be a pair. And on the first component, you are going to have delta of um, P and A, so you do the computation in the first automaton with uh, uh, with delta. Uh, you apply on state P, you apply transition A with delta. And on the second component, you do the same computation in automaton uh, A prime. So this is going to be delta prime applied to this state, uh, P prime with letter A. So that's going to give you the two, two parallel computations um, you need. And uh, really, um, it's, it's now easy to see just based on um, this argument that you do uh, two computations in parallel and you've got to end 
in a final state, uh, both in the first automaton and in the second automaton, uh, <clears throat> it's uh, it's easy to use this argument to conclude that the language of this automaton that I just built is exactly the um, language of uh, the first automaton intersected with the language of a prime. Um, and again, the point is, <clears throat> I'm going to accept only those input words that reach a final state uh, on the first component, meaning in this automaton, and they reach a final state on the second component, meaning on this uh, automaton. So hence you have this uh, intersection. And, and so obviously this is L intersected with um, L prime. <clears throat> Now for the um, concatenation, so if, if I am to prove that L1 times L2, um, it's a recognizable language, the automaton I'm going to build is simply this one. I'm going to, to just take um, automaton A, um, and, and this one starts from Q0, and, and my new, my new um, automaton also is going to start from uh, Q0. So this is going to be the initial state. And for any final state, uh, maybe you have several of them, so, uh, uh, you know, um, you are going to have um, an epsilon transition to the initial state of the second automaton. So for all of these final states, you will have an epsilon transition here. And uh, you are going to end up with whatever final states you had in here, and they are also going to be final states for the uh, automaton I'm just building. So this automaton is going to go like this. It starts in uh, Q0, which is the initial state of the first automaton, and for a while it does a computation in automaton A until it reaches a final state uh, in the first automaton, meaning that in uh, in the prefix of your input word, there's got, there, there has got to be a word uh, accepted by auto automaton A. And then you have an epsilon transition, and the second automaton has to read and accept the uh, second part of, the, of, your, of your input word. So um, with this argument, um, it's easy to see that the language of this automaton is really made of words of this type, um, u concatenated with v, u being in the language of a, and v being in the language of a prime. <clears throat> and that's exactly the definition of language of A uh, concatenated with the language of A prime, which is exactly L times L prime, <laughs> which is what we wanted to prove. And so finally, for the uh, iteration, so um, if I want to prove that L star uh, is a recognizable language, I'm just going to build uh, this automaton A star, and this is going to take the um, automaton A, and remember, this was starting in uh, Q0, and it was ending in a, a bunch of final states. And the only thing it does is it's going to add an epsilon transition from any final state to the uh, initial state Q0. And also it's going to make Q0 um, a final state itself. So what this does intuitively, first of all, by making Q0 um, a final state, I'm going to add the empty word uh, in, in, in my language. And then for all the other words that I want to accept, uh, what I have to do is I have got to run a computation in A and reach a final state. And either I stop there, or in fact the input word is longer, uh, and then with an epsilon transition I move back here, and again I have to do another uh, uh, successful computation until I reach a final state. And, and then either I stop or I have one more uh, uh, you know, uh, iteration in, in my uh, um, automaton A. So um, with this argument, it's, uh, it's, it's certainly clear, at least uh, intuitively, and uh, um, a more formal proof can also be given, but I, I'm going to skip it here. Um, it's, uh, um, it's, it's, it's easy to see that it's really the uh, iteration of the language of A and uh, this is obviously L star. <clears throat> and so um, with these constructions, what we have now is that um, we can prove um, a number of uh, examples just based on languages that we've seen in previous lectures. And um, for example, um, I could just list here a few such things. Um, Remember that we 
we had in one of the previous lectures. Um, for example, the uh, language L um, consisting of words over alphabet um, AB um, in such a way that um, W has ABA as a factor. And, and just to just to uh, convince you one more time that this is indeed a uh, so this is a recognizable language and, and just to convince you of this um, it's really easy to see this um, for example you just have this automaton it stays in state zero with uh, a and b and then with a it goes also here and with b here and um, with a it goes into this state and this is an initial state and, and that's a final state and then in this uh, state it can also stay uh, you know as, as long as you want so um, that's a that's an easy way uh, of seeing that this uh, language is uh, recognizable but just based on this uh, we also have for example that um, uh, you know as a consequence for example all, all the words uh, in a b star the property that <clears throat> um, ABA is not a factor of W. So this uh, this language is uh, obviously the complement of L. So th that's also a recognizable language. So not having a factor, um, that's a recognizable language. Um, but here is another one. Um, if I say, you know, I, I just want all the words in AB star in such a way that ABA um, occurs twice or, um, um, yeah, well, occurs twice uh, as a factor in W with uh, non-overlapping, um, you know, occurrences. And, um, and this is also recognizable because uh, you can see right away that this is really L concatenated with uh, L and, and that, that makes it a recognizable language. <coughs> um, or um, you can also, uh, for example, um, prove that if you take all these words, A, B star, such that, um, you know, uh, you, you can say either a, B, A, or B, B, B is a factor of, uh, of W. Um, this is the uh, concatenation of uh, two very similar languages, uh, one of them being uh, the one with uh, A, B, A as a factor, so the one that we, we had before, and um, this one being in a very similar way the set of words with uh, BBB as a factor and um, very similarly we can see that L prime is a recognizable language and so the concatenation meaning this example um, is a recognizable language as well. <clears throat>